You asked and I answered. That's right, it's the 40K Q&A in celebration of 40,000 subscribers to the channel. I am taking your questions and giving you my answers. Thank you for 40,000 subscribers. I was sick. I'm sorry. I still am. How were you first introduced to Magic the Gathering? Well, in high school there was this girl, and I guess she was a little nerdy, and she played Magic the Gathering, so I pretty much learned Magic the Gathering as an excuse to hang out with her at lunch, and she turned into my high school girlfriend. So yes, I learned Magic the Gathering in order to get girls, and it worked. What was your first Magic deck? What, like my first deck ever? Like the very first one that I ever built? Believe it or not, I actually remember it very, very clearly. It was 20 Giant Growths, 20 War Mammoths, and 20 Forests. Oh boy, was that a neat deck. And then my very first game of Magic on the playground ever was my opponent explaining to me, you can't have more than four cards each in your deck. And I didn't believe him, and so many other kids had to gather and convince me. Ah, memories. Goblins or elves? What, like which one I would pick in the battle? Like whose side am I on? Do I want the goblins to win or do I want the elves to win? But I'm not for war. I am for unity. I am for peace. So I choose both goblins and elves. Unite! What can be done to make modern a more sustainable and inviting format? Oh, that's a simple one. Reprint modern staples in block sets and create cards for block sets with modern in mind. Modern staples need to be reprinted in block sets. Not just for modern sustainability in terms of pricing, but also because that's where the most players are. And when they crack open cards that actually belong in modern and have a place in modern, then they are more likely to want to try modern. And when you create new cards, not with draft in mind, not with standard in mind, but with modern in mind, something that Wizards of the Coast does not really do, then you're going to encourage more and more modern play, and it's a two-way street. Modern players will get interested in the block set because it's got cards in it that they want. What archetype are you? A Johnny, a Spike, or a Timmy? Ta! You should know me by now to know that I am a Johnny, Spike, and Timmy. I reject your labels, in fact. I have qualities of all three of those archetypes. In fact, I reject that those archetypes are in any way a realistic category of player. Where exactly can I buy Magic the Gathering art so I can frame it and hang it on my wall like you do? What, like, like my Bitter Blossom by Rebecca Gay up here? Go check out her website. That's where I bought it from. You can go to your favorite Magic the Gathering artist websites just ask Professor Google, and they'll point you in the right direction, and you can see if they sell prints. Many magic artists have a web page where they sell prints. That's where I buy all of mine. I don't make it out to a lot of GPs where the artists are, and so I order it from them online. The prices are usually affordable. Rebecca Gay is pretty expensive, but everyone else has reasonable prices. Pretty, though. And so go check out their websites online. What kind of music do you listen to? Well, my father was a professional and very talented working musician. And so growing up with music in the household and the option from him to learn any music instrument that I wanted, being me, I rejected music and I said I wasn't interested in it and I never listened to it as a kid. And now that I'm an adult, I just, it's never been a part of my life, other than the fact that my father's a musician. So I never really put on music to just listen to or enjoy it. I'm afraid I'm not into music. How did you meet your wife? Believe it or not, I met my wife in a college classroom, an English literature classroom, in fact. In fact, the very class that I now teach. It was a literary analysis class, and we all shared our interpretations on the story, etc. And one day after class, 
my future wife came running up to me and she said, excuse me, excuse me. I just want to say that what you said in there, your interpretation and ideas on the story, wrong, 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 wrong. Oh my goodness. I can't disagree with you more. You don't know what you're talking about. And I said, oh, wow, you're smart. Hello. And it was love at first sight. Well, for me, it took her a little convincing, but I won it in the end. Tea or coffee? Coffee, be it espresso or drip. I am a coffee fanatic and I take it black. Black as midnight on a moonless night. What is your most memorable pack cracking experience? Probably my first pre-release. I didn't go to, nor did they really have pre-releases back when I was in high school. And so it was when I returned to the game, which was right when Innistrad was released, that I attended my first pre-release, an Innistrad pre-release. And in the very first pack that I cracked, not only of Innistrad, but at a pre-release ever, I opened a Liliana of the Veil, who was the Planeswalker, something that also, thankfully, didn't exist when I was in high school. And it was the very Planeswalker that was on the cover of Innistrad and on the packs, and I was super, super excited. And so, yes, as a result of that memorable pack cracking, I have also always had a fond place in my heart for Liliana. Also, Liliana of the Veil is way good. Have you ever studied a foreign language and are you fluent in that language? Despite being a professor of the language arts, I've actually been quite poor at acquiring foreign languages. And so the only language I speak is English. Now, I did live in China teaching at a university in Beijing for two years. And so I was fully immersed in another language for that time. My wife picked it up rather well, but Dubeche wada hanyu buhao. Who would win in an eating contest? A horde of slivers, a horde of atogs, or a single lesser Eldrazi? No contest. The atogs would eat the Eldrazi, and then the slivers would eat the atogs, gaining the powers of both atog and Eldrazi alike. What is the most boring deck to play, in your opinion? Eggs. What's the least enjoyable magic deck to play against? Eggs. Does the professor own a bow tie? Do I? Of course I do. Bow ties are cool. And you know what's particularly interesting about them? They're very, very hard to actually tie. And that means that anyone who actually ties their own bow tie, there's always going to be these little minor imperfections, a little tilt, a little twist. It's not quite perfect. And that's what makes them cool. That's what makes each of us cool. Do the scripts that you write for your old man hates actually reflect your views on those various changes to the game? Well, so far they've all been based on a rant that my friend Mike Fields had one night, but yes, they do. I miss Mana Burn. I think it should be brought back. I think it adds a neat complexity to the game, and I do feel that while Planeswalkers have been really great for sales, Planeswalker cards introduce an over complexity to the games and card interactions and that they are almost I win cards in most situations. And I don't like I win cards. I don't like how I have so little options in terms of interacting with them. What are your thoughts about women in magic? I think that the gender disparity in Magic the Gathering, the lack of female players is deeply deeply concerning. And I think that Wizards of the Coast should be doing everything in their power to target, reach out, and advertise to this missed demographic. Do you play board games? Why, yes, I do. Right now, some of my favorites that I'm currently playing are Boss Monster. Should definitely check that out. Lords of Waterdeep, of course. Uh, classics like Settlers of Catan and Dominion are also on my shelf. Actually, I have quite a few board games on my shelf. We play board games with our friends every week. Would you like to see some videos, just a few, on board games and my reviews of them? Are you a fan of the show Community? Yes, absolutely. I am a major, major fan, although I do prefer it when Dan Harmon is in charge of the show. Favorite episode, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. Would you guys like some videos on Dungeons and Dragons? 
Do you think testing a newly constructed deck against a pre-made deck, like an event deck, is a good way to tell if it would be successful against an average player? You definitely have the right idea. When you build a new deck, you should have a few decks, in fact, that you test it against, whether it's your friends piloting those decks or whether it's just you playing some sample matches against another deck to see how well your new deck runs. But I don't think an event deck is a good idea and certainly not an intro pack. I do think something like this $20 mono red deck that I just posted to the channel, or even this $20, I think the price on that one has changed just a bit since it started winning all the time, blue-white heroic budget deck is a great thing to keep in your drawer for testing against. If your newly constructed deck can't beat something like that, then you might need to go back and take a look at the drawing board, at the blueprints. If you were to design a magic set, what would the world look like and what new planeswalkers would there be? The world that I would design for a Magic the Gathering set would probably look a lot like Dominaria. I really like the traditional fantasy elements of wizards and fairies and dragons and things like that that we used to see in the early days of Magic. I'd just love to return to Dominaria, in fact. What would planeswalkers look like if I were to have a say in their design? I'd like to see some planeswalkers that are not super attractive action figure like 25 year olds. That means that I'd like to see some old people. Where's our ancient old grizzled planeswalker, male or female? What about some non human or non humanoid planeswalkers? Wizards of the Coast gets a little bit of data that says, hey, turns out players relate more to humanoid than non humanoid characters. And so suddenly they interpret that to mean no non-humanoids in any capacity. They even redraw slivers to be humanoid. Oh, come on, guys. Let's have some diversity. Who is your favorite actor to play Batman? In my opinion, only one actor has ever successfully captured the Batman, and that is, of course, the talented, the genius, Kevin Conroy. Look him up. Now I've got five, that's right, five questions for you. And it would really help me out if you answered at least one of them, if not all of them, but please be honest. Question number one, would you be interested in hearing me talk about other nerdy gamer things like board games, Dungeons and Dragons, maybe video games, that sort of thing. Same exact style of videos, just is it worth it to buy this board game expansion? Question number two, would you be interested in a few, and I mean just a few, occasionally having a video where I talk about something not gamer or gaming or nerdy related, like just a vlog-like video about my job or something that's going on in the world. Would you like just some videos about me talking about things that interest me? Or is that not something you're interested in? You know, things. Question number three, and for this one, it's really important that you be honest because it's going to cost me startup money based upon your response. But would you be interested in buying a t-shirt or perhaps a playmat in the $25 range. Honestly. Question number four, if you did buy a t-shirt, what size t-shirt are you? I need to know in advance because I do not consider print on demand to be up to my standards. Question number five, should I keep doing Q&A videos every 10,000 subscribers? I can't, I can't do it every 5,000 subscribers, but do you like these Q&As? And if so, every 10,000 subscribers like I have been doing with a magic memory that leads in to a Q&A sound about right? That's kind of what I'm leaning towards, but I'd really like to hear from you. Thank you again for 40, oh my gosh, 44,000 subscribers. Thank you.